Math 41, I had a question, or actually I should say Math 31, I had a question coming out of section 5.6, this was number 41, and here we're, we were given a function and asked to get basically all of the traits, right, find the y-intercept, the x-intercepts, vertical asymptotes, horizontal or slants, and then graph it. So the only two traits that aren't listed in those directions that would be listed in a midterm are the domain and range, and we're going to find the domain anyways. So let's start with this. Again, we've talked about, I, I keep repeating this, right? Our three domain issues in math are fractions, radicals, oops, let me move that down, fractions, radicals, and logarithms. And when you're in section 5.6, you don't have a radical or a logarithm. Those are coming. But what we do have is we have that fraction. So I need to look at that denominator and take a look and say, okay, that denominator is x minus 2. If I set that to 0, I'm going to get x equaling 2. And because this number zeroes out only your denominator, oops, that's how I spell the word out. Let me fix that. Zeroes out only denominator. That's going to tell us we have a vertical asymptote at x equaling 2. And I say it zeroes out only our denominator because if you plug 2 into this function, you would get 2 minus 2 on the denominator, which is 0, but the numerator is still 4. So it's not zeroing out the numerator. There's the case for when you have holes, when you have an x value that zeroes them both out at the same time. All right, so here's my vertical asymptote. I'm going to keep that in mind, right? And then I have my domain, everything but 2. So you see me booting 2 out from the domain. I started with all real numbers, but I got to lose 2. So if we're keeping track of some traits so far... My domain is negative infinity to 2 and then 2 to infinity. All right, I have a vertical asymptote at x equaling 2. Let's go after the intercepts right now. So let me go ahead and find the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts. So we have that. Now, if I want to find the y-intercept, usually that's the easier one. So I'm going to just do that over here. If you want the y-intercept, plug an x value of 0 in. So I would get 4 over 0 minus 2 squared, and that would be 4 over 4, which is 1. So I'm going to write that up as an ordered pair. All right, if you want to find the x-intercepts, you need to set your function equal to 0. And the only way for that to happen, the only way for a fraction to be 0 is if the numerator is 0. But the numerator is 4, and 4 doesn't equal 0 ever, so I don't have any x-intercepts. The next thing I'm going to move to is I'm going to move to n behavior. So let me rewrite my function. Let me put, actually, I'll put n behavior right here, but I'm going to rewrite my function just so I can deal with it. So we've got 4 over x minus 2 squared. n behavior is all about looking at the degree in the numerator and the degree in the denominator. So the degree in our numerator is 0 because it's a constant. The degree in my denominator is 2 because I have an exponent of 2. And whenever the degree in your denominator is greater than the degree in your numerator, or I could say it this way, just so we're clear. I could also say the degree in the numerator is less than the degree in the denominator. Whenever that happens, you have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. So I've got a whole bunch of traits listed right up in here, and that's going to assist me in graphing. So now you can see through my work, I'm going through and I'm finding all of my intercepts. I did it in slightly different order on the video than I wrote it up. All right, but keeping all of that in mind, let's go through all of this. So you see I have my vertical asymptote at x equals 0. I have my horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Oops, a little too many dots there. All right, I don't have any x-intercepts. I do have a y-intercept right here at 0, 1. Right? And then I had my, my parent function. If we think about this, this kind of looks like 1 over x squared which if you remember from your toolkit functions, looks like this. Oh, I hate it when that happens. Let me do this again. Let me just erase the whole thing and start it over. So if you know your baseline toolkit functions, right, it's gonna look like this. That's the x squared function. And if I'm looking at my function, which was four over x minus two squared, I know it shifted two units right, and it's got a stretch factor of four. And that's from all of those transformations that we talked about in Chapter 3, stretch factor. So that's why I've got this function. It basically, or I should say this function here, it basically looks like this one, but it's been shifted two units right, and it's a little bit steeper. 
All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye.